I got my first resin 3D printer a little over three years ago, and I was instantly blown away by the high level of detail they were able to achieve and at these super smooth surfaces. Over those three years, the biggest upgrade I've seen to desktop resin 3D printers was the move from standard LCD screens over to monochrome LCD screens, which allow you to print much quicker and it expands the life of your LCD screen quite substantially. Aside from that, the main things I've seen is that desktop resin 3D printers have gotten much bigger and the LCD screens have gotten much higher resolution. If I recall correctly, the first LCD screen on the original resin printer I got had something like a 480p LCD screen, and now with the Saturn II, it comes with an 8K LCD screen. Although this is nice, there are quite a few features I'd love to see come to desktop Ryzen 3D printers or become more of a standard. In today's video, we will cover these features that I would really love to see incorporated into future Ryzen 3D printers. And I would also love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, whether there is something on this list that you think is the most important, or if there's something that's not on my list at all that you think is a feature that would be really nice to have. Hopefully this will be something that some printer manufacturers see and maybe even consider when they're deciding on the feature set they want to incorporate into their next line or next generation of 3D printers. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in with no particular order, the first thing that would be really nice to see is more of a universal file format. With FDM or extrusion-based 3D printing, G-code has sort of always been the golden standard since I first got into 3D printing, and there are some sort of variations of that used by some manufacturers, but still the .G-code or G-code format is definitely the most common and most popular out there. MSLA printers do not have the option of using G-code because for the most part, they're made up of a singular Z-axis, and instead of using X, Y, Z coordinates, they have a set of stacked or masked image files that make up your 3D model or your 3D part that they will be printing out. It seemed for a while that the .ctv file type that was the standard in Chitubox was sort of becoming the universal standard, but then they went ahead and released their pro version of the slicer and there was some serious fears about resin printers being locked into their paid version of the slicer or the inability to use other third-party slicers. They have since released an SDK for their file type and it's my understanding that the printers using the Chit2 systems boards that use that .ctb file can now be used in Lychee as well, but it was certainly an interesting period in desktop resin 3D printing. It would be great to see a universal file format used for MSLA printers that's not controlled by a hardware manufacturer. Next is heated vats. For a lot of your standard model resins, this might not be as important, but in my experience, higher temp, higher strength, flexible resins or really any resins that are sort of more geared towards engineering or functional printing are way more susceptible to temperatures in the environment that they are being printed in. They are generally much more viscous as is and having a heated vat would allow for a much more consistent and reliable printing experience when using those resins. Pia Poly has released an upgraded heated vat option for their Phenom printer, which is really nice to see, but it would be awesome to see this incorporated into more desktop 3D printers, and if not become a standard, at least have the option as sort of an upgrade path to add a heated vat if you are printing with some of those higher viscosity resins. Next is a bit of a twofer, and that's power loss recovery, as well as a resin runout sensor. Now, it's my understanding that some of the resin printers already have power loss recovery. I actually think some of the resin printers I've tested out without realizing it have it, but it doesn't seem to be by any means a standard at this point. I would think that similar to how on FDM printers, they have the option to save the current layer that they're on to the micro SD card after each and every single layer, that something like that could be incorporated into resin printers. Most of the time you're printing from a flash drive. So if after every layer or image layer is burned or printed, that it then saves that data to the flash drive. So that way, if you have a brownout or a power outage or just something happens, you don't lose your entire print and you can pick up where you left off. As far as resin runout sensors, that might not be as big of a deal on these small desktop resin printers, but because of how large resin printers are becoming, you can fill the entire vat with resin and still run out of resin before you finish your print. And I know that Anycubic has their new M3 line of printers that takes it a step further where they have the ability to replenish resin on their own. I haven't tested out the M3 line of machines yet, but that does seem like a very cool functionality to have for, again, the larger desktop resin printers. I'm not even saying that the machine having the ability to replenish the resin is a requirement or something that I need to have, although it's certainly a cool feature, but even just the ability to pause the print 
that way you don't lose your print. And I'm not sure if that looks something like having a scale beneath the vat so it knows the weight and based off of the resin when you fill it, once it gets to a certain volume or a certain weight, it pauses or if there's a sensor in the corner that's not able to shine through when there's resin in there, although that could be tough with translucent resins, but so something along those lines would be a very cool feature to have. And I think that anybody that has a large format 3D printer would agree that that is something that would be very, very cool and very handy to have. Then we have wireless 3D printing. And with how big of a focus that is on FDM 3D printing with things like Octoprint or Clipper or any of the other interfaces, I'm really surprised that we have not seen that or more of that with resin printing. It might not be as handy as with FDM printing because with an FDM printer, you can have your spool of filament loaded up and just hit print whenever, I mean a week or two later. While with resin, there is a shelf life and especially having it open and even with the enclosure on, it's a bit more um, susceptible to to UV light hitting it and curing the resin inside, but I still think it would be a really nice feature to have, and it doesn't seem very common. The only machine I can think of that really incorporated it well was actually Creality's Hallet line. With their slicer, you can send a file to the printer or you can start a file from the slicer to the printer, and I think that that is a really cool feature to have, and even if you don't end up using it, I don't feel like it would be very hard to incorporate. I know that Chitu Box or the Chitu Systems boards had Ethernet available, but I don't think Ethernet is nearly as convenient. And also it's my understanding that with the ethernet, all you were able to do was basically send files, but you couldn't actually start, pause, or stop a job. I'm a huge fan of carbon filters, and I think that every single resin 3D printer should have one. And it's becoming more and more of a standard. A lot of resin printers are coming with really, really small carbon filters, which I certainly think is better than nothing. With the Elegu Saturn II, which I will have a full video on this, but it has a removable carbon filter attachment that's much larger and just plugs in via this sort of USB connection on the inside. And even if it's not perfect, just having the ability to remove some of the odor is a major plus. And I don't think anyone's going to be complaining really about having a carbon filter, but I can certainly see it being something that people would complain about a printer not having. One of the biggest reasons other than mess and post-processing that I hear of people that don't want to get into resin printing or aren't interested is because of odor. So if we're able to continue to evolve and address that more and more to make it where there's less odor while the printer is printing, I think that it would make resin 3D printing even more accessible. Last but not least is one that I hadn't even thought of until I used the Creality Hallet 1. And with FDM printers, something like this doesn't make sense because from one filament to another type of filament, there are so many settings to pick and choose from, but the ability to adjust all the resin specific settings from the machine instead of the slicer is really cool. The way it works with the Hallet 1 and I would imagine the other Creality Hallet line of printers is that you do your model specific settings from the slicer. So things like positioning, hollowing, supports, uh, drain holes, uh, the layer resolution. And then from the printer itself, you adjust all the resin specific settings. So how many burn in layers, what's the burn time after that, lift speed, all of those are done from the printer itself. And the reason why that's really cool is that in my experience, resins can be very different from each other, even from the same manufacturer, just by going with a different color. Like you have a color that's maybe more translucent and a color that's a little bit less translucent, well, it might need a little bit of additional cure time per layer. And instead of having to take that model, go back to your computer and re-slice it, if you can take all of your files and just adjust one setting from the machine and then every single file that's on your flash drive or on the machine is able to now be printed with that settings or those profiles, to me that is something very convenient and I am really shocked that I hadn't seen it or hadn't really thought of that as being a handy thing until I saw it on the Creality Hallet 1 printer that I tested out last year. And that is my current list of wants for the next generation of resin 3D printers. I would love to see some, if not all of these things incorporated. Again, I do think that Larger resin printers are cool because they originally were very small and I understand the appeal for a higher resolution screen, but there are so many other things that would really improve the reliability or the overall user experience that I just am not seeing incorporated at least very quickly into these machines even over the course of three years. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. What on this list is the most important to you and is there anything that I didn't state on this list that is something that is sort of a deal breaker for you or something that you are really looking forward to? 
On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.